In this video, I want to take a look at another basic shopping cart plugin. This one's called Ultra Simple PayPal Shopping Cart. Now, if you've seen any of the videos about the simple PayPal shopping cart, this one is based on it. In fact, a lot of the basic coding is the same, but there are a lot of different features in it, so it's worth taking a look at it. All right, let's go and install it here. And we're going to put in ultra new. Now, one of the things you have to watch for is you have to be careful if you already have or have tried, for example, the simple PayPal shopping cart and you've still got it installed and activated. Watch what happens. Install now. And when we try to activate it, watch what happens you get this fatal error going and it looks really bad, but all you have to do is just go down here in your active plugins and look for simple PayPal shopping cart. You have to deactivate that. Okay. And then you can activate the ultra simple PayPal cart. That's because they're using a lot of similar functions and that's part of what was causing that error. But again, nothing to worry about as long as you deactivate the other one. So right now we're running Ultra Simple, and you can find it here under Settings, and it'll say Ultra Simple Cart. That's where we're going for our settings. Now everything's done in a tabbed format. Just beware that it always comes back to this usage page. No matter what you do when you save options, save anything in these buttons here, it will always come back to here, which can sometimes get annoying, but you just simply go to settings. Now the usage, by the way, I'll just mention it does have most of the short codes you're ever going to need are here. So it has pretty good documentation that way. I find it a little hard to read just the way it's laid out, but it's all there and all usable from that page. Now we go to settings. And what it's going to do here is it's going to insert PayPal email address. Now it will actually put in your admin email from WordPress, but because I had the other plugin installed, notice it shares some of the similar options here. It's actually remembered from the previous plugin, it's remembered my store email address and it's actually inserted it there. So you may notice that if you happen to have installed simple PayPal shopping cart. PayPal Sandbox, of course, if you do have a Sandbox account, you could use it for testing here. But for most of you, this is just going to remain at production. Use PayPal profile-based shipping. If you don't want to do any shipping of your own here, calculating costs and so forth, you can just use the ones in PayPal, which are fairly extensive. And you would check that box off if you're going to use that, and it'll turn off all the other shipping functions here. Must collect the address on PayPal if you need to have them fill that out. If the address that comes from their PayPal account isn't enough, say they have a different address where they want it shipped, you would want to check this off here, and it forces them to enter a shipping address at PayPal. Now, base shipping cost, we're going to leave some of this for the discussion of shipping in particular. But the idea here is that if this is at zero, then there's not going to be any shipping cost calculated as a base shipping cost. It'll simply be whatever you put per individual item. But I'll explain more about how that works because this one's a little bit counterintuitive. Free shipping for orders over. Okay, if you've got shipping turned on here and you're making use of it and they reach a certain threshold, say you put $150 in here, it would give them free shipping at that point if they've ordered that much. Currency, this is where you'd enter your three-digit code from PayPal. And it's got a link to the full list there on PayPal. Currency symbol, again, you've got your choice here. And this is kind of handy because some places in the world, they put the currency symbol after the amount. And you have your choice here before or after where it's displayed. Custom PayPal button. Now, the next three items here are quite confusing. And we'll get more into them when we start talking about customization of the plugin. The thing to keep in mind here is this first one is about the PayPal button on the shopping cart. This next one is your add to cart button that appears beside each product. And then down here, this one is talking about the PayPal button. Even though it says cart button, 
you'll discover that it's actually referring to the PayPal button. It's kind of odd that they're separated because this right here has to do with whether or not you've checked off the custom PayPal button. Anyway, that gets pretty confusing and we'll go into that when we get to customization. Display product name, all right? If you tick this off, this is going to affect the display in the shopping cart. But next one here, because this looks like it's related to the same place, this one is about product options on the product page itself. Okay, so normally what would happen is if you had size and color, say for example, it would put size and color on separate lines. If you want them to display on a single line, then you would check this off here. And you'd really only do that if you had quite a wide area in which to display your product because if it's at all narrow and you've got more than one, then it's going to look very, very odd. This is a nice little feature here, display quantity field. This allows people to choose a quantity right there in the product. So you can check that off. So the nice part of that is that it gives you a measure of control over the way your product displays and a little bit of how the cart displays as well. And we'll get more into that when we talk about customization. I'm going to finish settings in another video. But that completes part of the first basics for your settings.